leftists on the court that will legislate from the bench, and that clearly won't be using the Constitution to make their decisions. They'll be bypassing that process. You know, Biden now has come out and said, yep, amnesty for all illegal immigrants in America. We know that this is the party of sanctuary cities and, and the sanctuary state of California, so it will be the United Sanctuary States of America, a party against energy independence versus, you know, on every single issue. Trump will cut your taxes again. Trump is going to put constitutionalists on the court. Trump is building a wall. We'll have 400 plus new miles built by election day. I think we're at 250 new miles now. Uh, on top of that, he had to work hard and bypass Congress, reallocate funds from the Defense Department to actually get it done, but he, he did it, just like everything else. It's not been an easy lift. And he's not had the help of any Democrats. They spent three and a half years just, you know, peddling endless lies and conspiracy theories and a hoax and dragging the country through utter hell every single day without caring one bit about the people that are involved in any of this. You know, they don't care about the real rule of law. They didn't care about Hillary's obstruction of justice. They didn't care about Hillary's Russia collusion and her Russian misinformation dossier. They didn't care about premeditated fraud on a FISA court. They don't care about the referrals for lying, but they'll have pre-dawn raids for Manafort and Roger Stone in the dark at night. 29 guys, tactical gear, guns in face, frog men in backyard, CNN cameras capturing the whole thing. They don't care about, you know, real quick pro quo, which would be show and zero experience Hunter. They don't care about the China deal, 1.5 billion, and Hunter still has a 10% stake in that company. He's going to make millions upon millions and millions of dollars when he cashes out. They were all awaiting the Durham report, and certainly hope we have news before the election. So there's a lot of stake here. It's freedom versus, you know, it's free market capitalism versus the predictable epic fail of socialism. None of this is going to work. Now, as it relates to coronavirus, everybody should rightly be concerned. You know where I stand on this. I've been pretty outspoken about it. I used the anecdote in that epicenter when this was right in the heart of New York and Long Island at its peak. I was out shopping every weekend. And I see the same people, same cashiers, I see the same guys, we even interviewed, I think his name was Richard, who stocks the shelves at my grocery store. And nobody in the store that I went to ever got coronavirus. They all wore a mask, they all had plexiglass up. It was social distancing practice, everybody wore a mask in there. I, I, to me, it's you know, not a big deal. I'll wear the mask, let's put this thing, let's kill this thing off, and that's the end of it. That's my own opinion. I know for some people it's a freedom issue, you know, you're an adult, you make up your own mind. My decision is based on two things. One, if I ever got this thing, I don't want to get it. I wouldn't want any of you to get it. Um, and, you know, it's only really about, what, one, two percent of people that really have very, you know, are, are put at life's risk here. But that's one or two percent to betting. So if it means that if I ever got it, I won't pass it on to a grandmother or a grandfather or a mom or a dad, and it also means that we can go out more and maybe go to ball games and baseball is opening up and maybe some football games. I'm all for it. I think it would be great. And it's only going to be temporary because that, I think, alone would end this way. And now we have studies showing that hydroxychloroquine, in fact, did work. But nobody in the mob and the media is going to tell you that now that we had a real study. Hey, I want to remind you, what do you do when things fall apart, when things are hard? What do you lean on? If you're like me, you turn to things that st stand the test of time. Friends, family, God, faith, a favorite movie that'll make you smile, a family recipe, comfort food. I love comfort food. Those are the things that are built to last. That's why we turn to them in good times and in bad. And by the way, also, I like old-style stuff. I like my Jacobus Cowboy Boots, for example. I love these guys. They built this company from nothing. They sold everything they had. They lived in the back of an older car. They, they literally have the finest craftsmanship. They don't give up on quality of the leathers that they use. And the craftsmanship, it takes 200 separate steps of a craftsman to make one Jacobus boot. They started selling at trunk shows, and now they're selling directly to you. You're going to get the best boots, the best quality, the best craftsmanship. And these are great Americans. 
Jacobus.com slash Hannity. If you don't have a pair, get a pair. People notice when you wear it. Jacobus, T-E-C-O-V-A-S dot com slash Hannity. Great people, great company, great craftsmanship, the best quality leathers, and you'll get the best prices because you're buying the right.